Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I know it's heavy. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Sound off like you got a pair of lungs, that is. My name is Dr. Nelson Garais, and welcome to Stratford University School of Health Sciences, Alexandria campus. And we just talked to everybody, uh, well, some people, to ask you why you are here. And it brings me to my next uh, topic, motivation. And a lot of people said, you know, I want a good, fruitful career. I want to help. A lot of people said I want to help, help somebody. It's beautiful. Keep that. But the thing about motivation is it's rough, isn't it? Right now, today, we're all what? Yeah. What's going to happen come week five after finals? It's hard. What happens when, every, when, when, when everyone's at the beach and we're where? You're in the library. You're doing work. It's going to be like that forever. Remember I told you, some of you earlier, that Saturday holidays for medical personnel, it's just another shift. When I was working as an MA and because as a medical biller, as a medical arbitrator, and also as a healthcare administrator, um, and also a physician. See how that goes? Right? Did I take any days off? Because when were my patients sick? They're sick usually when? Near holidays. And also, by the way, anyone working in the hospital, you want to be in the hospital during a holiday. Can anyone say triple time? Triple time. All right, that's nice. What do you think? Um, I think for like 10 years, I don't think I was ever home on Christmas or New Year's. Because why? I'm, I'm earning triple time at the hospital. Not only because I'm doing extra hours, because of the very fact. And also, that's when you're most needed. And that's the higher standard. And we're going to talk about the expectations in a moment. So the motivation. Now, suspend your disbelief. Um, many of you may have heard that. That's by the famous uh, speaker, motivational speaker, Les Brown. Do any of you all remember when we were kids when we thought, like, I could be, goes, I could be a football star, or I could be the president. I could be anything. Remember that when we were those guys' age? Yeah. What happened to that? What happened to those dreams? Reality. Well, what's the reality? You can't be anything. That what, what, why can't you? Why? Sometimes you don't have the talent. Sometimes well, you don't have talent. Hey, not all of us can be NFL football stars. Yeah. <laughs> what? Because, okay, well, let's talk I about, am. let's talk yeah. about talent. Yeah, well, right. Right. He's going, right? He's going, <laughs> right? Let's talk about talent. Talent goes, everyone was born with something, but if you look at every major athlete, they were not born that way. What did they do? They trained. Even look, let's look at Tiger Woods. Actually, there's something called the 12 year rule, right? Let's look at Tiger Woods. When did he start? When he was like, what? Three. Five, four, three, some ridiculous number. So let's look at, most of, um, add that to the 12 year rule. When did he win his first tournament? He was 15. And then we think, oh, he's such a phenom. Until no one saw like horrible, horrible work that he had to do. When all the other kids are playing and having fun and being at Chuck E. Cheese, where's he at? He's at the driving range with his poor, poor dad going, hey, hit that ball, hit that ball. Wow. It may sound cruel, right? But remember, we're talking about medical. A higher standard than our neighbor. Because remember, when we miss, make mistakes, People tend to get hurt, people tend to die. And that also goes for all HIM and HCA personnel. Because if you're not properly administering, get, uh, administering people in the right place, if you're not properly controlling the information to get to the right people, then how can the medical assistants, the doctors and the nurses do our job? Can't. And then we guess, and then what? You know, when you guess, that's when bad, bad tends to happen. Okay, so suspend your disbelief. Stop thinking that, oh, oh, I don't have enough money. I goes, I don't have enough this. Go back to when we were children. Go back to that every day. Go back to that. Yes, this is possible. And not only this is possible, this is possible, that is possible. I used to have my own dream like, oh, I want to be the CEO of my own company. Now, I am the CEO of three failed businesses. <laughs> right? But I tried. I got out there. And now my third failed business is now supporting my what? My fourth business, which is doing all right by me. Because why? I said, I just suspend my disbelief. Okay? I, I said to myself, yeah, I can do it. Because I, because 
I wanted to own a club, I didn't have enough money, but what can I do? I, I formed a production company that does what? Form the parties for the club, get the bottles for the club. I live my life through Twitter and Facebook. Why? Because I suspended my disbelief when people said, but you're a doctor, you shouldn't be doing that stuff. Forget that DJ stuff, that was when you were a kid. Oh, leave kid stuff behind. Yeah, well, kid stuff behind is making me a decent amount of coin on the weekends. Right? That's, and that's why you can support the thing that I really want to do. I want to teach. And we all know teaching don't make, make much, but it's what I love to do. So I got to do all the things that do, do what? So I can suspend my disbelief and support what I want to do. My new thing now, I'm thinking crazy. I want to build a pool in my basement. Let's do this. Let's have a plan out. It may or may not happen, but what am I going to do? You know that saying? You shoot for, you know, you shoot for the moon, what do you get? You get the stars. You may not make it. And who cares if you don't make it? Motivate yourself. You have to try because guess what? For all of you who like to compete, there is a young man, young lady, where? In the next school, in the next school, in the next school, with your same situation, if not worse, who's ready to eat your lunch to take that job away from you? Right now, let's all act like colleagues and help each other out. But the second we all graduate, well, who are we? We're all competitors. I want your job. My kids will go after your kids' jobs because it's survival. But here, in this atmosphere, suspend your disbelief. And again, excuses. In medical, we always talk about how excuses are like rectums. And you'll learn that your rectum is your backside, a little hole right here, right? Everyone's got one. But the problem is, is what? We must be about performance. We must be about our patient. So try to get that where? Here, while you're in school. You get that attitude while you're in school, you build it, it gets ingrained, and then guess what? It gets like that, and most HR people will see right through you because if you don't have that attitude. Actually, we just had an advisory board where uh, we had a meeting with several um, nationally uh, um, marketed healthcare science companies. And they all said the same thing. They have an attitude problem with their new entries. They have the chops, you know, they, they pass the exam and all that. But, you know, after the first couple of weeks after the excitement goes, what happens to their motivation? It goes, it wanes, it goes down. They don't stay excited. They don't, they, they go, and then, what comes out? All the excuses. Most medical personnel don't want to hear it because every other medical personnel has kids, has life problems, has car problems, has every other problem in the world, just like you. But remember, there's somebody out there willing to do what you want. I'd like to share with you one of my uh, students from another campus. She had cancer, end stage, meaning to say is she's done. The only reason why she wanted to stay in her program was to show her sons, who both dropped out of college, that it can be done. Guess what? She did it. You know what she did? She did something insane, which I don't, of course, condone, but you gotta, uh, she suspended her disbelief. She had three different oncology or tumor doctors or cancer doctors tell her what? You better get back on your chemo or you will die by the end of the year. But she says, I want, I goes, but I'm so close to graduation. So what'd she do? She took herself off meds. Guess, um, can anyone tell me her attendance rate? For the last three months, what's a good rate from zero to one hundred? Anyone can tell me, sir. You got an answer. What's a good What's a good What's a good number? Zero to eighty. What did you say? Did you say what? Eighty percent? Yep. Eighty percent attendance rate for the last three months of her life. She graduated, and then right before graduation, what happened? She succumbed to her illness. Ever since then, I have no excuse to be absent. She was dying. And she lived by what? She suspended her disbelief. She lived by a much higher standard than I can ever will. And every, how many days are like, oh my joints, oh my this, my back, my problems, oh my kids, my car, my life. Am I dying? If you are not dying, then you should be in the car, on the metro, on your way here, early, on time. Because there's somebody else out there who's ramping up to take your job away from you. And when should you be preparing for that? Now. Expectations, that's our expectations. One of these is communication, we're all adults. I do understand, you got a lot of stuff going on, but talk to me. Do not hide. These are one of the, this is one of the few universities that we do uh, monitor our attendance. Because guess what? What does our employers monitor? Think of it like a job. We allow you up to what? Three consecutive absences before like, we remove you from your class. 
Let's try that at work. Anyone here would like to be three days absent and don't tell anybody? Or even if you do, even three days absent, well, he wants to. He's okay with it. <laughs> you get nervous after that second one. No, you get nervous at the first one, not even talking to somebody. Because what do you always oh, yeah, do? Always. You call your boss. What should you do with us? Get used to that and do what? Don't hide. You call us. And um, I, I can email to all of you our, all our call numbers. Same thing with our um, student accounts. Do not hide from them. Their job is to keep you in school. They don't want you on collections. They don't want you to fall behind on payments. They don't. Mr. Wolf and Ms. Massenburg, their only function is to keep you alive. But I have a whole ton of students who do what? Well, that's a credit. Let me just. I should know. I defaulted on my master's degree with Rutgers University. What did I do for the first couple of years? Like every time they call, I look, Rutgers, oh, wait, that. That's, that's accreditation call. I don't like that. No. Answer. Before calling, I'm, and let me tell you, I live by a higher standard. I'll start calling you at 10 o'clock. I don't care if it's beyond policy. Mm -hmm. I called students at 8 o'clock this morning. Why? You're not calling me. Right? I told you because uh, you were, they were absent on a crucial finals review. That means they don't know. They're probably walking into a gunfight with what? A pair of chopsticks and a dream. <laughs> right? So what's going to happen to the final? <laughs> so I want them to come in when? Today. So I called them, 8 o'clock, hey, I'm going to be here all day. You don't call me by 12, guess what? All bets are off. I don't see any red light on my phone. So those people are not willing to do what it takes. You are willing to do what it takes. So communicate, call often, call early. Even if you're just feeling a little bit like, you do poorly on your first quiz, it's so easy to go, wow, my bad, or oh, man, this professor just getting on my last nerve. It's easy to do that. What's better? Call your professor. Ask your professor. You know, I really studied. What did I do? Call me. I am your academic advisor. Your admissions are the people who got you in the house. I love them for it. Now it's my turn. Cut the cord. Come see me. You call your admissions, admissions officer for, I don't like my quiz. What's the admissions officer going to do for you? She's going to tell me. So why don't you just skip the middle, man? <laughs> Get to me. Then I can call, right? And if you're, if you're a professor, because if you and your professor, you know, because it's different personalities, button heads a little bit, it's expected, right? Call me so I can be what? I can be the middleman, because I can translate for you. Because some professors, don't you think they have excuses? Don't you think they're human too, right? And my job is to do what? Make sure you guys mesh. So communication, call off and call early. The syllabus, I always get this. I didn't know who to call. Number one, I'm going to give you all the numbers of all, facts, all, all the staff here. Number two, your contact information should be on the first page of your syllabus. Make sure you see your syllabus. Your syllabus is posted on Moodle. So, and the syllabus has all the rules and regulations of everything you wanted to know about Stratford but were afraid to ask. Okay? Take advantage of us. Take advantage of your time. Be here. Let's say, for example, like th there's something really going on that you cannot be here the whole entire time. What can you do? Give me a call and I can go, you, you got about 30 minutes, maybe I could brief you on the notes. Maybe I give you the notes, maybe you can just take your quiz and you go. So you may not get uh, attendance for the day, but what can you do? You didn't miss out on a grade, right? And then, you know when you talk to somebody and you see their notes, you know? Do that. How many times have professors, I ask, the, I ask them, hey, did you call out your student? Because yeah. Did they call you back? No. It's like, that's like a daily conversation with me and, uh, me and the staff. And then, and then I go, and then I call you. I call, and, and I do stuff like borrow other people's cell phones so you don't know it's me, <laughs> right? And then, and then I go, and then I pretend I'm your friend. Hey, what up? And then like, hey, yes, this is Dr. Grass. How you doing? Oh. Oh. And I hear the, I hear the, I hear the deflation oh, of the voice. But don't have that attitude. I am, I and the staff are here to do what? Get you to the other side. Forget. Remember, suspend your disbelief. Forget wearing that stupid little hat and a gown. Forget that. That's nothing compared to the first time you get the check. That's nothing compared to the first time somebody calls you sir or ma'am because you're in a position of, uh, of authority. That's what you should be living for, right? And those of you who have children, uh, yes. the second of my first one was born was all about what? Her, not me. My life ended, the, I, and not in a bad way. My life ended the day my first was born. Goes, and, and what? A new life began because for them. And guess what? 
it does wonders for your children. My, all my four, let me be honest as a parent. They're not the brightest tools in the shed, but I'll be honest with you, they're the hardest, most well-trained. All four of them do very well in school, not because they're bright, because I am, me and their, their mother are on them 24 7 365. Guess what? Before the park today, what did I get? What did I get? Oh, do I have to do? They're out of school. They actually do more work in summer because they're home. They, they can't wait until September because why? Daddy don't have to give them homework at 7 o'clock in the morning. Every day they are awake, even Sunday. All right, before we go to church, who's going to do their exercises? And also, a lot of the exercises are online, so all I have to do is email my own kids. Right? Boom. Right? And I'm going to see it because guess what? They have to submit it online. What do you think I'm doing for them? I'm creating little academic monsters who will do what? Eat your lunch. Yes. And enjoy it. Right? So take advantage of your time. Everything that you should be doing. All of you are young. Everything you should be doing is for your future career. If I didn't do that when I was younger, I wouldn't be able to. Right now, I'm only in my 40s. And I'm cruising. How many people can say that? That they don't have to worry about their future? I have an extra business. I got two 401ks and stock options from two Fortune 500 companies. Why is that? Because since I was 12, I've been working. I've been thinking always about what? Where? Because next paycheck. And did I want to work? No. When I was 12, my mom came up to me. She actually signed my working papers. I was in sixth grade. My mom came up to me because Mr. Davis needs his uh, lawn mode. And I'm like, so? Is that my problem? She gave me that paper. She goes, it is now. I'm like, that's messed up. And then she told me what? Can't go play baseball unless I do all these lawns. Oh, oh by the way, um, uh, all throughout uh, middle school and high school, all my checks went to my parents. Why is that? Is guess what they were doing? Because I wouldn't do it. I'd spend it on like bubble gum and God knows what, right? Guess what is a co college fund? Ever since sixth grade. So I had enough money, not for the whole four years, but I had enough money at least for the first year. And it bought me time. Right? See how this goes? Not the sharpest tool in the shed, but the what? Hardest working one. And the one that sees the future now. Use your crystal ball. Use your time. So if you guys got some extra time on the weekends, or on certain nights or certain days, what should you be doing? You should be going to that board over there and looking for some volunteer opportunities because guess what? Could that lead you to a job? By the way, my wife's in an HCA program. She used to be in a nursing program. Uh, she has an HCA job and she's still two years off of her. Uh, she has two years more to go. How'd she get the HCA job? Guess what? Volunteered. They liked her so much. And guess who worked her resume? Please don't tell Dr. Kerbal. We did. We did our career services. Take advantage of us. Oh, by the way, the contact too. Please don't tell Dr. Kerbal. Contact too is one of ours. And she's not a part of this university. So just imagine what we're going to do for you since you're a part of this university. Right? But you got to take advantage of that. Get me your resume. Some of you already sent it to me. When should you be thinking about your resume? And also, do the follow-up. Many of you are like, thanks for the resume. Well, where's the draft? Where's the next set? Because guess what? I'm going to have another set of questions. And then you're going to have another draft. By the time we get to the fourth, fifth draft, it's going to be ready to rock and roll. And I got a problem with some of my seniors because guess what? We got them jobs and they did what? The fear, right? Well, you know, maybe I don't have time. Maybe I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. They got this awesome resume. We actually found a place for you. And what did they do? Didn't show. So take advantage of us. We also have AX tutoring. When do I always get tutoring requests? Week 9 out of week 10. Will that help you change your grade? The week before finals? No. The people who pass on my tutoring are people who get to me week two, week three. If you're weak at studying, and I can tell you right now, if you're from a typical uh, high school and grade school setting, even in this lovely Northern Virginia, they didn't teach you how to take tests, they didn't teach you how to study, and they definitely didn't teach you how to do time management. We do, but you need to do what? Call out to us. AX Tutoring, type in AX Tutoring, um, dot edu and it gets to me and then I can disseminate it and how many of you here are really good at math nobody nobody guess why oh well maybe she is so she'll be the mathematician right guess what oh don't do math accounting business finance that's what I'm trying to tell my kids but guess what all my kids are now what 
their future health care. Why? I could tell them everything. Don't be a doctor, please. Right. No, not health care. Make something lawyer, money. Right. Right? right? So you can support your papa. Guess what they all want? Be health care. Like because what do they see? They see their dad. They see their mom. It changes the face of your family. Before 1968, the Celedonia Garayas family were only three things. Pregnant, farmers, or soldiers. That's it. After my mother, first doctor in the family, now everyone's what? Healthcare. A whole bunch, no, no doctors because I make sure of that. Doctors, no. There are all these other jobs that will make you more money and have better job satisfaction. Please, if any of you are thinking about going to medical school, let me crush your disbelief. Let me just beat you up and go, hey, how about this healthcare thing? Hey, but how about this uh, um, master's in HIT, which by the way, we're going to be getting in 2017. Yeah. Emissions didn't hear that. Right? So, take advantage of us. We have our services. Now, S3, student services, you'll be hearing from them as well. We're adults, right? When we were kids, when we were those guys' age, guys, isn't it easy to go to school? All you have to do is do what? Show up. Do you have any mortgage problems? From the blank expression? Oh, well, she gave me a look, right? Because she got no tax problems. Yeah, God bless. She has no easy problems, apparently, right? Right? They don't have any, but we as adults have all these problems, don't we? And sometimes it weighs very heavy on us. Guess what? As adults, we're always taught to what? Just chew it up, swallow it, deal with it. Do not do that. It won't work. It'll eat you up. What should you do? Come visit a Miss uh, Carolyn Kroger. She's our student services person. Or come visit uh, a professor that you trust. Because do you see we're in a room with 60 people? No. We're a small university and we'd like to keep it small. So that what? So that you guys finish. I can tell you, when I was teaching at Rutgers, I got a class of 60. Uh, statistics wise, um, 18 of them should drop before their second year. Um, by the way, my last class that I taught at Rutgers, I taught anatomy and physiology. Um, out of the 60, um, about 30 of them would fail my class. Because why? All the things that we talked about. They don't get help, they don't ask for tutoring, they don't communicate with me, and they do what? What happens to their motivation? I failed the quiz, now I got a C minus on my midterm. Ah, I have to, I'm done. Or, you know, and it's very different now because most of you are paying for it, right? When I was going to high school, well, the state was paying for it, but the second I get to college, who's paying for it? You. So if that's not motivation enough, think about all the money you're wasting when you're not in class. Think about all the money you're wasting not taking advantage of our services. We only have, what, 150, 160 students uh, 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 currently. We have one whole full-time um, student services person. Most universities of like 15,000, 10,000 have maybe a staff of three, staff of four. Right? That's how much major universities care about your well-being. They're just hoping you don't shoot anybody. Right? They just want, want your money and they don't care if you uh, drop. We care because we're focused on not graduation rates. We're focused on placement rates. Who cares if you graduate? I care if you're working. And it makes sense, doesn't it? If you're working, you can pay back your loans, isn't it? Right? For those of you in the finance world, you decrease your bad debt. Which those of you in HCA, you better think of the P's and Q's because people are in HCA, you, um, the thing when you come into our HCA classes, Focused on what? Fiduciary responsibility. Um, on medical personnel, on, uh, medical assistance in Rome, don't worry about that. Just keep on going about your day and using up all supply, using too much of it. Uh, someone in HCA will call you out on it. Right? But again, it's all team and, it, and there's so many options. Does anyone have any questions for me? Comments? Oh, yes. Recipes. One question. What's your question? Uh, it fell out of your head. Uh, that happens to me all the time. See, see, when you get older, it gets worse. All right. Thank you, everyone, for choosing. Uh, oh, when will the syllabus be? Oh, syllabus will always um, uh, be on Moodle. Definitely by the weekend before um, uh, your, before your class starts. So classes start on August three. My syllabi are due for approval by uh, next Friday. And uh, definitely, uh, your professor should be discussing the syllabus with you before you even start lecture. If your professor does not, I need a call. So 
So I can whisper in the professor's ear, like, shh, by the way, your students don't know the rules. And you've got some new students, because sometimes they forget. But me, I always uh, discuss. And if you have me, oh, chock full of joy, if you have me for our uh, class. It'll be a wonderful experience because I live and breathe by these tenets that I, uh, that I presented uh, before you. Anyone else? The lady in the back, did she remember her question? Or she's just stretching? She's just stretching. Oh, that's good. It's good so we don't have any back problems. So are we all good? Uh, yes, sir. Is it a medical question? Because I'm advised by my lawyer uh, to inform you that I no longer have a license to practice in the state of Virginia, but all my answers will be purely academic. So it looks like you got a boo-boo question for your thumb. Is your thumb okay? Is it still working? It's the proper color? Okay, then, uh, then you're good. Then, uh, then um, I think uh, for HCA personnel in the room, we're, um, you'll be receiving your bill. And, uh, please pay within the 60-day mark, and then you should all be good. All right? Thank you very much, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Keep smiling despite you don't want to, right? Because you're going to need it, and definitely when you're working, you're going to need it. All right? Uh, so stay positive, and remember, if anything, I know it's the morning, suspend your disbelief. Think that. So that thing about, like, oh, maybe I should have, uh, like, for example, fine. Let's say he makes it to what um, Division One school, right? You like football? Sure. Uh, so he's probably a Cowboys fan, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. We don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I love messing with you guys, right? Well, let's I say for example. Now. Yeah. Let's say for example you make it to Division One, then you blow out your knee, right? Do you think you can be a a doctor that deals with what? With the uh, with the sports? Policeman. That. Oh, oh. policeman. That's good. Oh, that's just backup. That, that's good too. But go for like, go for like FBI or DEA. Fine. Those guys are really cool. Yeah, they have to wear suits. Like you're kidding people. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. I know I was wrong with it. That's okay, Dr. Brass. Thank you, Dr. Brass. Come on, Joe. We're going up to the fifth Healthcare community. The healthcare um, uh, system is highly complex, but I wrote the word community connectedness. There's a decrease in uh, complexity in uh, getting people to get together. Okay. Now, of course, the, um, um, and this is in regard to all in regard to geographic location. So again, even though the textbook is talking about, you know, country to country, like going to Luxembourg or going to China or whatever, let's talk about like how you can expand your particular marketing to um, other regions in Nor uh, Northern Virginia or having Northern Virginia going into Maryland, um, uh, that kind of mentality. And one of the keys is technology. Remember we talked about in remote medicine, we talked about concierge medicine. Well, you can use Skype, you can use a multitude of uh, uh, online tools uh, to overcome uh, your geographic location. And again, for the new trend, it's also gonna do what? Increase in patient management options. Back in 